Okay, so we ran across this topic when we were researching for last week. If you remember last week, we talked about the player's journey. While we were going through that article, we came across this one. Yes. And we dove. <sighs> what are we talking about, honey? Hey, player types. Yes, specifically Bartles player types. If you're wondering what that is, strap in. This is going to be a hell of a ride. <laughs> You want to start off? Okay. This is good. Take notes, all of you. Developers, take note. Yes. So, this, um, our main dude, Bartle. Yes, Bartle. Bartle. Yes. Richard Bartle. Yes. Richard Bartle. Richard Bartle. <laughs> Put, uh, di dissected uh, different player types into four types. Yes. The players into four types and put them on a quadrant. Yes, a, the, the typical concept of if you slide more in this direction or more in that direction, you're one of these four archetypes. And what we love about what, what Bartle did here was he kind of titrated the whole experience down mm -hmm. into the very essence of why people play games. Now, he used, he used MMOs. He used MMOs. Okay, as his basis for research. Yes. But you can break this out and apply this to, to single player games and other genres. Yes. Okay. You don't have to use the acting, interacting uh, players and world. That's a good place to start, but you can break it down into four other variables right. that can be opposing each other on a continuum. That's what's right. important. You need to place these on a continuum. Right. And here's the thing. These are in opposition. These are in opposition but these are complementary. So yes. the vertical, the up and down, oppose each other. The difference between acting and interacting, those are opposites. Players versus world. Mm -hmm. That's where the experience lies. Those are opposites. However, this line here complements this line here. And what that means is, if you go outside of Bartle's player types and you mm -hmm. want to do this with your own metrics, right. make sure that the two metrics that you have complement each other and then have the two sides be opposing. So you could have something along the lines of cooperative on one end, competitive on the other. Right. But then you want to have something along the lines of teamwork versus solo, which yeah. are also opposites, but you could see how the two could complement each other. Right. Um, for the purposes of this discussion, we're just going to stick with what Bartle has. Okay. So in analyzing MMOs, uh, Bartle took the these four uh, concepts these four variables acting world interacting and players mm -hmm. and put people in different quadrants so uh players who were high on acting and the world mm -hmm. were adventurers right okay? you're achievers achievers they were yeah. achievers whereas if you're pretty focused on the world and interacting you're an explorer right. explorers are people who just d dive deep into the game and Try to see everything, including exploits, Easter eggs, etc. Right, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Players who were big on interacting and being with with other players, they were the socializers. Right. They're on there to socialize. <laughs> and then, lastly, the the people who were big on uh, act, players and acting, they were called the killers. Right. Because they would get in there. They loved the swinging. They loved getting there and beating up on other people as much as they love beating up on the monsters. Right. The PVP slash PVE. Yep. Um, so to make sure you understand a little better of where these come from, because again, you don't have to get stuck on this metric. Mm -mm, no. But this is a good place to start <laughs> um, when when the, the horizontal line is really easy to understand. It's, are you player-centric? Do you want your experience to involve other players more? Or do you want your experience to involve the world more? Mm -hmm. That's what the horizontal line is. The vertical line is, do you want to act upon the experience more? Or do you want to interact with, with the yeah. experience? So in Bartle's player types, which is a great default, you're looking at whether or not the player is focused more on other players or your world and whether they want to act upon or interact with. And mm -hmm. once you find out where the players lie that are playing your game, you can craft the experience to meet them. Yeah, absolutely. And it also gives you an understanding of where your game may fall short of their expectations because in so many of our workshops, 
and our forums, we give a lot of subjective evidence. Mm -hmm. There are people who want those long cutscenes with heavy, heavy development. And there are people who want wham, bam, go kill the bad guy. Right. So understanding where your players are will help mm -hmm. you understand how you can streamline their experience. Or, inversely, will allow you to understand what type of players you should be attracting. Yeah, I was going to, since you talked all that much, I was actually going to interject. Go ahead. And say I told you that I was talk as a you're, lot. yeah, you talk too much. <laughs> I'm spanking was, her later. Yeah, he, he is. It's going to be my Christmas spanking. But anyway, moving on. Um, and when you're developing a game, you can think about your player type. What it is, who it is that you're developing for. Who do you want to attract to your game? And this all ties into who's your target audience. What what's your target player? So you can you know use the the player type as another tool yeah. to gauge who you're developing the game for. Yeah, that was my point. Good point. Um, and again, as Teal said earlier, mm -hmm. and this is super important, it's okay to create your own matrix. Sure. You just need to know what factors are important in analyzing your player types. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the fun part, because someone on our server has talked about this before. But we're going to show you the foundational parts of it. This is something that Bartle, when Bartle originally did it, he assigned card suits. Yes. This was brilliant. Yes. Bartle is talking about muds here. Hearts, clubs, diamonds, and spades. Mm -hmm. This is a fantastic read. I'm not going to read it all to you. We can talk about it. This will be in the link for the VOD. It is an abstract, so yes. some of it gets pretty dry, mm -hmm. but it is all on point. Very much. Mm -hmm. Very, very much. Um, the big part right here that I absolutely loved is right, the things that they say. Yeah. This part right here, each player type in more detail. So we'll briefly talk about this, and then we can move on to the next article. Sure. Okay, so an achiever is going to say things, and when they say say things, they mean like, their commentary upon the experience. Right. So an achiever is gonna be like, I'm busy. I've got things going on. I've gotta go fish 700 holes in order to get my angler achievement. Yep. Um, sure, I'll help you, but what do I get out of it? So mm -hmm. I'll help you grind for your gear. What do I get? Um, so how do you kill the dragon then? Okay, what method do you use to accomplish a result? Yeah. And then finally, oh my God, I've done this myself. Only 4,211 points to go. I've done that. I've done that. <laughs> Teal's an achiever, by the way. I am. Especially yes. when it comes to fishing. Totally an achiever. Yeah. Overachiever. Hi. Hi. Okay, but let's talk about that. So the opinion on the achievers. They're the people who want to see what they can milk the game for. Yeah, they, um, they're they really interested in... Uh, in achievements and badges, titles, um, names that they can gather for themselves, um, leaderboards, they any kind of a visible achievement that they can they can own. They can they can walk around. You know, like in a ESO, for example, that's an MMO. An ESO, um, the you could have a there was a little icon above your head if you'd gotten a certain achievement. Yep. Uh, different uh, colors, like uh, different dye colors you could clothes, earn yeah. on your clothes if you had made a certain achievement and only people that had that achievement could have that dye color. Wasn't it that if you became emperor in the Cyrodiil PVP, you got a certain red that only that person got? Correct. It was red, yeah. diamond, red, and only the person who had been emperor could have that dye color. Of course it'd be red, diamond. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, those things are important to achievers. Right. Now explorers. Ah, the they explore. Yeah, they go say ahead. things like, hmm, you mean you don't know the shortest route from obscure place to obscure place? <laughs> I haven't tried that one. What's it do? That's like me every time I boot up Skyrim. Mm -hmm. uh, why, why is it that if you carry the uranium, you get radiation sickness? And if you put it in a bag, you still get it. But if you put it in a bag and drop it and wait 20 seconds to pick it up again, yeah, don't. <sighs> Explorers, basically, what they're trying to figure out 
is how they can experience the world and what the world has to offer. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's primarily the type of player I am nowadays if I'm playing an open world game. Yeah, primarily, uh, especially when I'm in open world, but other games too, I am an explorer. Yeah. And I think explorer encompasses more than what this article is saying because this article is more like an MMO and... It mud-based too. Mud-based, mud -based. yeah. And for me, an explorer is, is someone who checks out every single thing that's in the game, every locale, every monster, every yep. book, every piece of lore. Every schnook and cranny. Every, every schnook and cranny, every item. Yep. That That is what an explorer does. Yep. It's not just about uh, finding shortcuts and exploits and Easter eggs and things like that. Although that's right. part of it. It is literally exploring every square pixel yes. of the game. Yes. It is all about squeezing every bit of that experience out. Yeah. Um, socializers. Now, so <laughs> I love this. These are the best quotes ever. Uh -huh. This actually reminds me of my old mud days back in high school and college. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, well, I'm having trouble with my boyfriend. Don't you hate when that happens? Mm -hmm. um, what happened? I missed it. I was talking. Oh, really? No, no. Oh, gee, that's terrible. Are you sure? Awful. Just awful. So basically, I mean, it is actually making fun of them, but socializers are not there to play the game mm -mm. as much as yeah. they are there for the interaction with other human beings. Yeah. Now, if you're thinking, well, I'm kind of this, but I'm also kind of that, everyone who plays a game with other people to some extent mm -hmm. is interacting with them. Absolutely. A socializer is someone who prioritizes that. Yeah. Their priority is how can I experience the company of other people within this game. Yeah, I actually hung out with a couple of socializers when I was on ESO. We were all in the fishing guild together mm -hmm. and we would log on and we would go to like a fishing hole and we would fish. But we'd also be just chatting and uh you know one lady had kids we talked about you know some, some of her, her kids and yep. what, what was going on with them i mean we just sat there and socialized and uh that was what we were doing the one role play mode that teal and i were a part of back in the early aughts um the socialization there was so heavy that sometimes we wouldn't actually get any role play done we yeah. just log in and just chat mm -hmm. which is fine that's what it was there for um when I watch Fox, Giba, and Sect play Final Fantasy XIV, mm -hmm. approximately half their time is them just bullshitting. Yeah. yeah, they're doing things like getting ready for the next raid and doing mats, but they're also just bullshitting. Yeah. So socialization is very heavy in MMOs. Yep. And a lot of people go onto those MMOs just to socialize. Sure. I'll be honest, I'm enjoying Seven Days to Die with Hawk Zombie and the others, but I do primarily get on that game to socialize with my friends. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. Heck, even in Phasmophobia, we end up shooting the shit in the lobby for like 10 or 15 minutes. I can't even tell you the number of times <laughs> that Teal, Box, Boo Boo, Kiyoya, myself, any combination thereof have blown 30 minutes just chatting in the game lobby between matches. Yeah. And that's okay. <laughs> that's what we do. Because again, going back to this, no one is one thing or the other. They're just weighted in that direction. Exactly. So if you get on there and you find that you're interacting more with other players in the world, you're probably a socializer. Mm -hmm. You'll have other elements, but you're a socializer. Yeah. And then we get to the last one. The last one. And this is just this point. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. Thank you so much, tier one. 22 months. 22 months, baby. Merry <laughs> Christmas, everybody. And happy holidays. Thank you so much. 22 months at tier one. Thank you, Tron. Lots of love. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Big ooh, ooh. Yeah. All right. Um, so now we have the killers. Yeah. And the killers, you know, ha, coward, die, die, die. Basically, killers are there just to get their schmack on. Yep. And there's nothing wrong with that. So they're, they're very uh, raid focused. Yes. And uh, shoot, you know, world bosses. Yeah, world bosses. <laughs> um, see, the biggest difference that I see between a killer and an achiever is the achiever is going to try to squeeze the reward system. Right. While to a killer, the reward is beating the snot out of something, mm -hmm. but not necessarily just killing something. I mean, it could be uh, getting first on a leaderboard, you know, being the mm -hmm. first on a contest. Mm -hmm. um, the recognition that comes with the act is not as important as the act. 
Yeah. That is what a killer is. And there's literally nothing wrong with that. Um, there are people who play PvE games that they go and search for people who need help with a raid, a dungeon, or whatever. Yeah. Just so they can get their, their schmack fix. Yeah. You know? You know, I played with a couple of folks like that, mm -hmm. and I, I appreciated the hell out of them because mm -hmm. they... They were very focused on on the task yeah. at hand, and we got through it yeah. because of their tenacity and ingenuity. Yeah, uh, our friend Giba is uh, dude four hundred four. He is primarily a killer. Mm -hmm. When he plays his games, yes, he does socializing. He does you know the different achievements, but he's really all about getting in there and getting results. Yeah. So he's a great person to go when you need a tank or another deeps. Yeah. Not that we play those games. Oh yeah. Yeah, and KB split between Achiever and Killer. Right, mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah. I am definitely much more Explorer than anything else, but I would say other than that, um, Achiever slash Socializer. I don't really care about killing stuff. Yeah. To me, that's a means to an end, not an end to the means. I'm an Explorer Achiever. There you go. There you go. Yeah. And we all have different strokes for different folks. Absolutely. And that's what makes games so much fun is you meet all these different kinds of people. And, you know, situations change. And so y you want to be flexible into who to pull in depending on the situation. Oh, Tron, you're not just a killer. You <sighs> are the killer. You are the killer. Are, uh -huh. Yeah. That's right. You're the stone cold killer.